Hey folks, David Stewart here. It's time to talk more about music theory. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the cadence. There's one right there. What is a cadence? Well, a cadence um, is basically any movement from a, an area of tension to an area of relaxation. You can think of it as the broadest idea in music. And it's where I really like to enter into the discussion of functional harmony. What is functional harmony? Um, well, functional harmony is taking those chords uh, that we talked about last time um, in, the, in the chord video, or really chords in any key or chords across different keys, and arranging them in a certain order to produce a particular effect um, where you feel like one chord is moving to the next um, with some sense of direction and some sense of effect. Uh, that's really what functional harmony is. Functional harmony is what we used in uh, most music uh, right up until the uh, till today in popular music, although um, there's lots of examples of non-functional harmony in art music uh, beginning right about at the end of the 19th century with uh, some of the Impressionist music and then of course um, the atonal uh, 12 tone music that began to uh, began to take hold in the 20th century. Um, so cadences are a great place to begin with that because it's the easiest to hear the movement from one chord to the next in terms of in terms of the relationships and the tension. And it's also uh, the way that you're gonna end most of your phrases of music. So if you know how to end the phrase of music correctly, what you do prior to that, um, you, you have a lot more creativity over. You can do lots of different things in between that first chord and the last chord. But getting to that last chord and making the, um, making the listener feel some sort of sense of completion, that's an extremely important concept that should not be overlooked. So I'm gonna talk about it early and often, and that is what we're gonna to do today. So the first big type of cadence that you need to know is what we call the authentic cadence that I um, hinted to last time. So if you go back and you look at that chord video, and there's seven chords in every key, the fifth chord resolving to the first chord is one of the strongest kinds of cadences we can create. And um, I'm just gonna do this in treble clef uh, for y'all. If we have the five chord in the key of C, which is G, um, that going from G to the one chord, C, um, which we can put here, you know, if we want to put it there, um, or we could put it down here, doesn't really matter. Um, back down here is probably slightly better because we could see a particular relationship right there. Um, that resolution is called an authentic cadence. And there's actually several different types of authentic cadence. There's a perfect authentic cadence. Um, and then there's imperfect versions of the authentic cadence. Um, so a perfect authentic cadence would be a resolution five to one both chords would be in root position and you'd end up having um, usually the uh, the tonic end in the soprano. So it'd be a very special kind of five to one. The perfect authentic cadence is usually considered the strongest possible ending to a piece of music. And that's that um, cadence that I played for you just a second ago. G7 to C for you. Anyone who knows your chords, if you're a guitar player that knows the chords, G7 to C. That's a five one in C. You could do a five one in any key and it's gonna have the same effect. So if we go, um, say F7 to uh, B flat major seven for like a jazz sound. That's an authentic, that's a type of authentic cadence um, right there. Any key, it's gonna do the same thing. If you do uh, D major or D7 even to um, G major, that's an authentic cadence right there. And the reason that we have such a strong resolution with the authentic cadence is because we have one note in common. The fifth of the, of the one chord is the root of the five chord. And that's a really strong relationship if you go back to our just intonated intervals. That fifth is really strong because this is a three, two ratio. Between this note and that note, it's a three, two ratio. It's an extremely close uh, close relationship. However, the two notes that we stack above it, um, you know, for its little tonal relationship, the two notes that we stack above it are quite dissonant compared to uh, that C. We have the B, which is the seventh scale degree. And remember, we had to go 16 harmonics up to get to that seventh scale degree when we were multiplying things out. It's very distantly related, and therefore it's very tense and wants to resolve uh, by going back to that tonic chord, that restful tonic chord that we have there. And then of course we have a D, which is also pretty far away from C, and also wants to resolve down to C or go to one of these other, other notes in the chord, E and G. Um, so we have uh, both things that are common and things that are extremely different, and that creates a really strong resolution. Indeed, any resolution that goes down by a fifth, by five notes, is gonna feel really strong. So you go and you listen to some of the functional harmony created by Bach, he'll have these cycles where everything's just moving down a fifth. Five, one, five, one, over and over and over again, uh, all the way around different keys sometimes until eventually you get back to this tonic and get that final 
resolution. So as you progress through the chords, if you wanted to build backwards and go up by five notes each time, you create an extremely strong um, sense of function. I'll talk about more about that in, a, in another video, but that is an authentic cadence. Um, now another kind of cadence we have is actually a deceptive cadence. The deceptive cadence is where you have a five and um, you're setting it up to go to one. When the, when the listener hears that five, especially with that with an extra note called the seven, we'll talk about that in dominant seven chords. Again, we can't get to everything every single day. Um, we've got to break it down into pieces. When we're playing through our um, chords, the listener really wants that five to resolve here. But instead of going there, um, we go to the six. That's called the deceptive cadence because we're we're kind of faking the listener out. We're making the listener think we're going to the one, and then we don't go there. Instead, we go up to the six, and uh, we get a we get a um, sort of a resolution, but it's not to the chord we wanted to. It's not to the chord that we set up as the tonic, and so all of a sudden we feel like let down a little bit. That's called the deceptive cadence. So that's the deceptive version of the cadence. Deceptive. The next one is one that you'll hear a lot in, um, in church music, maybe at the end of a hymn, and that's called the plagal cadence. And that one is actually, it doesn't even start on the five, and it starts on the four. Um, so in, in the key of C, which we've been operating in, a four one is a, is a plagal cadence. Um, and you can hear that as sort of the amen. The amen part of, um, of any sort of uh, hymn is gonna be the... Uh, <laughs> Or you may keep a couple of the notes in common. So if I were to do it uh, maybe a little bit higher up, like up here, that sounds like the amen right there. Um, this is a resolution rather than going by a fifth, we're going by a fourth, which is actually feels like it's going backwards. So this is, if you were to put C above F, you'd see that we have a 5-1 relationship between C and F. So it's kind of like this backwards relationship. Um, but in the context of the key, we hear it resolving because we've heard um, we've heard the one chord, we've heard that C major chord in the key of C over and over again being presented to us as the tonic. And over time, we're really going to hear that 4-1 as a, as a resolution. It's one of the weaker kinds of cadences, but you can do it. And um, you can do it for really good effect if you, if you want to do something a little bit different. Most popular music doesn't really do the plagal cadence, but uh, I think it's a very, very useful cadence to have. Um, you can also do cadences with some other chords. Um, these are the main chords that you're going to use to do a cadence. Um, and uh, in case you're wondering about what chords I'm using, uh, this is G, G major, and I was drawn as an MA, C major. This is G major to an A minor. I was drawn MIN for minor. And this is F major to C major. All right, that's the name of the chords. You can also do a seven one. So you can do a B diminished, um, B diminished to. Um, C major is a, is a really, really strong cadence as well. Um, so a B diminished would be basically these two notes, B and D, and then one more F. And if we have a G7, so sometimes we put a, a seventh scale degree in here. It's so hard to get all the information in in one video, but sometimes we put the seventh scale degree in, which makes it even stronger because the F is also distantly related to the, to the C. Um, so we end up with but three distantly related notes. B, D, and F all lined up into one dissonant diminished chord resolving the one. Very nice resolution. Another kind of cadence that you need to familiarize, uh, familiarize yourself with um, is not a chordal cadence at all, but what, what we call a rhythmic cadence. So I'm going to put that in this video too. What is a rhythmic cadence? Well, a rhythmic cadence is um, the perception that you're ending a phrase not the, um, um, the relationship between pitches resolving from tense to relaxed, but rather the relationship of time resolving from tense to relax. Um, faster divisions of time, you know, 16th notes. I have some sticks here. You're going to hear some snare drum. Um, faster divisions of 16th note or faster divisions of the beat are going to feel more tense than slower ones. So if you go from a fast to a slow, you're gonna get a really, really good sense of a rhythmic cadence. Here's a really easy one. Okay, fast, rest, and then finally we get to um, a re of what we feel like is a resting point. 
So you can do this with any kind of rhythm with the chords, with pitches or without, or on, or on just a rhythmic instrument. If you play fast to slow, fast, slow, you're gonna feel a sense of tension resolving. Get the idea? Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I promise I will have more for you guys in the in the realm of functional harmony. So be sure that you're rushing up on this stuff. Try applying it. Try putting these chords underneath the melody that you maybe wrote in one of the uh, after watching one of the previous videos, and see if you can get these chords to line up. I will talk about lining up chords and melody in a future video. Um, but for now, you can really see hopefully how all of these different uh, sets of chords will resolve. If you're looking at some of your music that you're familiar with, some of your popular music. Um, what you can do is look for these resolutions, the fifth chord of the key resolving to the first chord in the key, like D to G, uh, C or G to C, uh, maybe A to D. Um, those are all resolutions. So if you see that resolution at the end of, um, at the end of a, uh, uh, a particular phrase of music, even a, a popular phrase of music, then you'll know that you're doing uh, a cadence. And that's about all I have to say for today. You guys have a great day, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to visit my websites, davidvstewart.com, dbspress.com, and uh, let me know what you want to see and what you want to hear down below. I really, really appreciate it. Have a good one.